Recently, I was seriously disrespected by uh, one of the more prominent software companies that makes synth plugins. So I want to talk about that today. I want to tell you what happened. I also want to uh, just talk about the plugin just a little bit. Uh, so here we go. To start out, I think I need to go back quite a few years and talk about a device that isn't being used by a lot of software companies anymore, but it was used quite a lot several years back and it's still used by a few companies today. Back in the day, we called this thing a dongle. And if you don't know what a dongle is, it used to plug into things like a printer port. And it was a device that, uh, that held the authorization for a program. So for instance, with Cubase, they've always used dongles. And there's a number of companies over the years that use them. But over time, it became a USB device. And, and once it became a USB device, it really became quite popular. Everybody was jumping on board to authorize their plugins by putting the authorization on these dongles or USB keys. And one of the companies that came along, and a lot of you are familiar with this company called iLock. And with iLock, their sole business was to create the dongle or USB key uh, to, for any number of companies to come along and to store their authorizations on that USB key. So for instance, a lot of plug-in companies used it like Waves, uh, McDSP. And the reason I wanted to start my video by going back to that was in the early days, these iLock devices were not dependable at all. They could break on you very easily. And of course, when that happens, you are out of business. You can't use any of the plugins that are authorized. We would be on the phone trying to get our authorizations back up, trying to figure out what we needed to do. And they were often very uptight about helping you on the spot because you know, they didn't know that you really did have the authorizations. They wanted to make sure the device was broken and you weren't trying to come up with some other way of reauthorizing another iLock device and having two separate ones. I mean, there's a whole lot of weird stuff that went along with it. Uh, bottom line, the company wasn't very cooperative at times, but they got better at it and iLocks continued to be a useful device. It, but anyway, because the product was pretty undependable in the early days, iLock came up with a program that I still feel really offended about. They decided to have this zero downtime program, and many of you may be familiar with this. The zero downtime meant that you paid, on top of buying the iLock, now you paid an extra fee so that if your iLock went down, you could basically contact the company and immediately get your authorizations back up temporarily while you're waiting to get a new iLock with the authorizations, new authorizations on it. And zero downtime was a great idea. It just shouldn't have been something you had to pay extra for. It should have been part of the purchase of the iLock because imagine you buy an expensive program, you now buy the iLock, it breaks, and for you to get your authorizations right back and keep running, you have to pay an extra fee for zero downtime. So over time, a lot of companies got away from this idea of authorizing on a dongle. A few companies still do it. And that's where I start today. A lot of you are familiar with Nexus. And I use Nexus not super often. It's not, uh, it's not what I would consider a go-to synth. And it's not because I don't like the sounds. I like the fact that they're constantly reinventing by giving you the option to purchase expansion packs. The, the reason I don't love it is because if you've used it, you know that you don't have a lot of room to manipulate the sounds. You can't really uh, go in and really tweak and change the sounds a lot. Like for instance, if a sound has a built-in rhythm, that's probably part of the sample, and you may not be able to do anything about it uh, on some of the patches. One of the packs that I bought was called Sounds of Summer, and it had this sound in it that I use a lot. I like it because it's kind of uh, it's kind of got a horn effect in, in, a, in a production. It's a cool sound. So some cool sounds, but the thing about Nexus is they authorize their product with the dongle or the USB key. And in their case, they do it kind of in a strange way because they authorize theirs on a Steinberg dongle, the same one that if you're using Cubase, your program is authorized with. So if you're using Cubase, you don't have to buy a new dongle for Nexus. You just 
put your authorization on that dongle. Works out really well. But just recently, the dongle that I had went down. Uh, it had been showing bad signs for a while. There was some little authorization issues here and there. But finally, one day, it just completely died. And so not only did it take Cubase down, but it took Nexus down. With Cubase, they have what's essentially a zero downtime, much like I described with iLock. But of course, it's available to anybody who owns the program. You don't have to pay extra for it. So with Cubase, I was up and running within minutes. It was no big deal. But getting Nexus back up and running, that was a different story. Uh, incredibly tough because they, first of all, have a company policy that is very prohibitive. It doesn't allow for you to just call them, explain the problem, and get back up and running with the new authorization. They have to actually get, get the physical dongle that's broken. They want to examine it. They want to make sure that you're not lying to them, that you don't have the authorization still on a working dongle and you're trying to get a second authorization for a different dongle. Second thing is that they aren't very nice people to work with. And I hate to say that and especially put it out there in a video, but it was so true. And I think it's so important to anybody that's considering purchasing Nexus, you do need to be aware of the problems you're going to run into with this dongle issue. If you're sending the product to them, from the US, it has to go to some place in Canada. It's a PO box, first of all, and they require that you send it registered mail. So when I sent the dongle to Canada, I had to pay $30 US. So I went down to the post office, I paid my $30, I sent the product off. And so the process for me took at least three weeks before I was able to see a notice that said the package has been delivered. And then I waited for another week after that. And I waited thinking, well, sooner or later, they're going to send me a notice, right? Well, I never got a notice from them. So one day I just reached out and I said, hey, it looks like you guys have the package and you've had it for about a week. Can you check and see if I can get my authorization back? So it was like a month before I was able to use Nexus again. Now let me tell you the story getting to the point where I actually sent the package. When I reached out to them at their tech support, I said, hey, my Cubase dongle has broken. It went down. I've lost my authorization. I went out and I bought a new dongle. It's plugged in. I've got Cubase up and running. I just need to get the new authorization from you guys. They said, oh, we can't do that. Company policy, as I've explained, but this is where you send it. And when they told me that I had to send it to Canada, I sort of flipped out. I'll, I'll admit, I flipped out. I was super aggravated. I thought, come on, man, we just have stepped back, you know, 15 or 20 years here to like the old iLock days. At one point, the guy said, that's the policy. And if you don't quit arguing, I'm going to close this ticket. So I said to the guy, I don't like that. I want to complain about it. Do you have a contact for your corporate office? And they wouldn't give me that information. So I went online and I started digging and I found the name of the owner of the company and just kind of looking around, I was able to figure out what his email was. So I wrote the guy and I thought, oh, this guy's going to be cool. He's going to get it. I'm just a guy down here trying to work, trying to keep moving. So after I sent my email, the guy responded pretty quickly. So this is what he said. Just send it. It's not that much work. And we need to verify that the dongle is the right one and contains or at least at one point contained a Nexus 2 license that hasn't been moved to another e-licensor before it's self-reported as broken to the ELC. We can't just blindly trust anyone who opens a ticket. We've been taken advantage of one too many times over the years. That's why we instated that policy. And I get that. I get why you instated the policy. I think it's very questionable that you would say something like that to a customer. We can't just trust anyone. I get it. You can't. But that's not something you really should be saying to your customers. So I wrote him back and I said, you know, I've seen other companies that have treated their customers like they weren't to be trusted. And I said, those companies eventually go out of business. So he writes back and he says, sorry, but this now sounds super fishy to me. If it's too much to ask to put the broken dongle into a bubble mailer and pay around $8 for postage, then we simply can't help you. Really? This is the owner of the company? So I wrote him back and I said, yeah, fishy. Like when a customer goes to the extent to look up a contact for the guy who runs the company, tells you who I am and asks for your help. A customer who is in your database and has paid for your products. 
that is pretty fishy. So he comes back and he tells me why it's not because he doesn't trust me. But he ends his email like this. He says, we have over 100,000 customers. I simply can't deal with everyone personally because they have a stick up their ass about one thing or the other. So that's the owner of the company. I just have to say that's not the way to talk to a customer. I didn't ask for anything that was unreasonable. I just wanted to be up and running and have my product that I paid for be able to use it. So I went online to just see if I was the only guy in the world that ever had this problem. And what I found was numerous people have had a run in with this same guy. They've had bad experience with tech support. They've had worse experience with the owner of the company. Once you have customers that are in your database, that they are, they've paid their cash to buy your product, you need to treat them like gold. This type of attitude is what drives people away. This is why I will not buy any more products from this company. I will not buy any more of the expansions or any of their other scents because this isn't the way you should treat a customer. Anyway, I've said what I wanted to say about it. I'm not criticizing the product itself. Uh, the product is, has its value and I'm not telling you to not buy the product. But if you do buy it, and if your dongle breaks, get ready for the process because they are going to make you send it to Canada. Anyway, last rant for a while, I promise. I'm gonna get back to videos that have to do with production here as, as, as I go forth. All right, you guys, if you found this video useful, please like, please subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Until next time.